Hi, I'm Christine and welcome to my sewing studio. Today we will be doing a Sew With Me on Simplicity 9375. It is actually this skirt right here. You can see that. It is a, we're doing view A, which is the long skirt with an angled front. And then there is this little tie feature right here that we will be working on. I will be using a 100% flannel today on mine. It's a, a blue and it's got kind of a greenish gray and white check to it. Um, it does call for linen blends, chambray, um, cotton blends, and as well as flannel. I will also be making size 16. Um, I have found, I know they've got all the different measurements on the back of the patterns, but I've found that if you go two sizes up from what you normally wear in the store, it usually works out the best. So I'll be doing that. And then what else you'll need today, you'll need obviously a pattern. It calls for a nine inch zipper, oh no, I'm sorry, it calls for a seven inch zipper, some thread. Um, you'll need, of course, your scissors or cutting. I have a rotary cutter that I'll be using. Make sure you've got your cutting mat. You will need a tape measure because there are pieces, actually all of the pieces you'll have to lay on the grain. Um, I think only the facing and the front will be laid on the fold. Everything else is laid out on the grain. You'll also need a ruler because there are four different darts that you'll be drawing on here. So it just is helpful to have a ruler to make sure you match up the dots. Um, and so you will need a fabric marker. And of course, your pins. So again, the notions say for a seven inch zipper, I chose a white one to match. Um, you also need about three quarters of an inch of interfacing. I was able to use some of my scraps on the interfacing, so um, that's not a huge deal. It's basically just on the facing, number six, and then the two pieces of number seven. So for view A, you need pieces one through seven. Now I have found that on piece number one, at least my pattern piece, it does not have a grain line on it. It's not to be cut on the fold, but it is supposed to be cut on the grain line. So it is missing that. Um, so instead I have used this, there's a, there's a dotted line in the middle of the pattern that's the center front. So I went ahead and used that as my grain line. Um, basically since I have this checkered pattern, I laid my fabric out right side up, which normally you don't do but I wanted to make sure my grain line ran across the, the um, checks perfectly. So I also made sure that I flipped over the pieces that I only, I'm only supposed to cut one piece. So for example, piece number three, you only cut one piece. So since I'm laying this right side up, I flipped over my piece number three, so it's actually matching what the pattern is going to look like. I think piece number four is one of the ones that you do have to cut out twice. And since I laid out my fabric, I didn't fold it over because I want to make sure it's really straight. So I laid out my piece number four and then I flipped it over and cut it again. So make sure of the pieces that you have to cut two of, which I think is four and number seven, make sure you flip them over so that you've got both views. Um, you'll also have to cut the packet, which is this four different times. So I did two times with piece number five right side up and two with it flipped over. And then the interfacing, you will cut on piece number six and number seven. One other thing I found on the pattern is in the instructions, on the instructions here, piece number three, it says is the left front overlay. It's actually right, it's the right front overlay on the pattern piece, it is listed correctly and in the instructions, but the only difference is when it's laid out, when you show the pattern pieces and what to cut, that's incorrect. Um, so that was the other mistake I found in here. Okay, so now that we have all the materials that we need, we're going to get started. Step number one says to stay stitch the top of piece number one, which is the front. So this is the front 
And stay stitching is basically where you stitch very close to the edge along the top and it keeps it from stretching out. It says to stitch from one end to the center and then the other end to the center. In the instructions, it says to stay stitch a half of an inch from the edge. Um, I don't like to do that because usually it ends up showing up after you've already sewn everything. So I go ahead and do it as close to the edge as I can and it seems to work for me. The next part in step number one is to do the darts. Okay, this is my piece number one, the front. There's one of my darts and there's the other dart. So in order to make these darts, you're basically just going to bring these two lines together with the extra piece of fabric on the inside and pin them along the line. And since it's a pretty long dart, I'm going to pin it a couple times. So there you can see, I've pinned it along the dart line. And what you're going to do is you're going to start sewing along the outside edge, all along the dart line, up to the point. When you get to the point, you're going to back stitch right there. And then iron it out and fold the dart over towards the center. Okay, so I've sewn both of my darts and I've ironed them towards the center of the skirt. So you flip it over and you've got your darts. The last part of step number one is saying that you need to reinforce this lower large dot. Now basically this is where our slit is going to be. Basically you're just going to sew a little bit over and then back stitch over and then you're going to cut the fabric up to the stitching, making sure you don't cut the stitch. Okay, so I have stitched through the dot, stitched back, and then I've clipped up to the dot, up to the stitching. And then step number two is basically making this slit. You're going to do a narrow hem on this bottom part, which means you're going to want to fold this over half a little bit, and then fold it over again so that you don't have any frays. And then just sew all the way down. Okay, just to show you on a step-by-step -step of this narrow hem, I basically folded this over about a quarter of an inch. I did eyeball it, but you could use your little hem hemming tool here. Um, I pinned it down and ironed it. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the pins out and fold it over one more fold pin it and iron it so that then I can sew it. So here's my narrow hem. Now normally when I do hems, I actually serge it and then just fold them over, but I'm kind of liking this narrow hem where it's just folded twice over. Um, I went ahead and sewn right down along the edge here and I ironed it all out. For the first part of step three, you're going to take piece number three, which is the right front overlay. Again, I said on the instructions about what pieces to cut out, this calls the left, it calls it the left front overlay. This is actually the right front, which is piece number three. And you are going to stay stitch along this angled top part here. You're going to stay stitch from the top down to the curve, and then again from this edge up to the curve. Okay, so I've stay stitched, which I'm not sure if you could see that on here. It's a little bit of a stitch right, right really close to the edge to make sure that it does not stretch out. Now the second part of step number three is to do the same narrow hem again down the long part of pattern piece number three. Now what I just realized, my piece is opposite again. Um, I cut it out, I swear I flipped over piece number three so that it would be the correct side but it's showing up as opposite on the pattern, on the instructions. So we'll see, we'll see what side my knot is actually going to be on. So go ahead and make a narrow hem along the long edge of piece number three. I know I said that I made this pattern piece opposite again. Um, I said again because the last uh, dress I did, the women's jumper, that was all opposite also. So I tried to make it so that it's similar to what it shows on the picture and then I somehow get it opposite. So maybe next time I'll just say forget it, I'm just going to cut it and it ends up being correct. The last part of step three 
is to reinforce between these two dots. We've stay stitched up to here, and you're going to do the same thing as we did with the big dot on the front. You're going to stitch through these two dots and then clip up to them. So I have folded over the little area right here in between the two dots. And I know it says a lot of different things on step number four, but all it is is just a narrow hem. Step number five is you're gonna take piece number three that you've just sewn this little notch here. You're gonna take the tall part over here and fold it over and match up the large dots. So there's a large dot here, which basically means that it's going from the edge over. And then you're going to match up the two small dots, which is really just where you've cut the fabric right here. So it's going to look like this. You're going to match up that part and then the edge over here and you're going to sew along the top part right here, along the edge right there. I wanted to show how I pinned it. Looking at the instructions, it does show that this little area right here is not laying down flat. So I thought I had screwed something up, but apparently that is correct to look like that. Now it says to match up the notches, which I have a notch here and I have a notch over here and they don't match up. Um, it doesn't say anything about it bunching together in order to make those notches match up, it really does show that this upper area is laid flat. So I'm going to go ahead and sew it right across there. Now it does say also to stop at this large dot and to just back stitch right there. All right, I have sewn my piece number three together. And then step number six basically says to open it out, the piece that you've just sewn, and you're going to iron out the seam allowance here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so you can see I have ironed out my piece number three, the seam allowance. Now the next step for step number seven, you're going to take your piece number two, which is the left front overlay. And you're going to do the same thing that we've done with all the other pieces. You're going to reinforce in between these two dots, back stitching here, back stitching here, and then you're going to clip little triangles, and then we're going to fold this over into a narrow hem. It's so nice when all the steps are about the same. So I reinforced, clipped, made a little narrow hem here, and now the second part of step number seven is to make a narrow hem along the other edge, the unclipped edge. So we're going to do a narrow hem along this side. All right, so I have done a narrow hem along piece number piece number two, and um, now we're moving on to step number eight. Okay, so step number eight talks about putting this piece number two through the hole in your piece three. So if you remember, when we sewed this piece number three, this little area where we had tiny notch cut out, there was a tiny hole. So you have to stick this piece number two through that hole, which is not easy. And in the picture, you're gonna get it through and there's a notch, the notch that's on piece number two is the part that's going to be basically through um, piece number three. And then you're gonna fold this over and stitch along this rough edge. Now my picture is opposite. You should have this, since, since my number three is opposite, apparently my number two should have been opposite. Since it's not, um, I think it's still gonna work out, but your piece number two probably has this narrow hem along this side. The same thing is going to happen though. You fold it over and you're going to sew along this rough edge of piece number two. I'm gonna pin that. You basically sew right up to where we cut it for the little notch here. So you're going to sew this area right here because then it eventually gets flipped over like that. Okay, I have sewn my piece number two together on the edges. 
and then I opened it up and I placed it on the skirt. Now this piece right here on the back part is piece number one, which is the front. Then I've basically taken my overlay, piece number three overlay that we just put together with the knot and match them up on either side with the notches. Now it does talk about matching up the large dots as well, but um, I found that the notches worked great. And it says to baste along the edges here. And what I'm thinking I might have done is I might have put the hem or the uh, slit on the wrong side. So I'm not sure what side the slit is supposed to be on, but there we go. Um, so I would baste just a little bit right here and baste on this side as well, the part of piece number two, because here's my number two right here. Again, mine's opposite of yours. And here's piece number three. So go ahead and baste both of those. And basically basting is just a larger stitch that you put in there so that when you end up sewing it at the end, if it shows, you can always pull it out easily. Steps number 10 through 18 are for views C and D. So we are going to skip ahead to step number 19, which is with piece number four, which is the back piece. And you are going to go ahead and stay stitch along the top edge of both pieces of number four. Okay, so the beginning step of 19 was to stay stitch along the top edge of piece four. And now we're going to make darts on both of them. So once again, we're going to bring these two lines together, the two dart lines, pin them. I'm gonna do that a little farther down on the dart as well. So there's my dart, as close as it can be. And now I'm going to stitch from the rough edge down to the center point of the dart and back stitch there. Um, when I'm done with that, I'm going to iron it out, iron it towards the center back, which is the straight piece, the straight edge. Do that on both pieces.